devil uses pain and trauma in our lives is an opportunity to speak. And let, let me say this now. I don't believe the worst thing about pain is the pain itself. And I think you would agree with that. The worst thing about pain is the message that it brings. Because there's always a message in pain. Rejection, abuse, disadvantage, disappointment, failure, sin, sickness, chronic sickness, trauma, loss. All of those things are an opportunity for the devil to come and to use those to deceive us. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. The devil, what makes the devil dangerous is not just that he's evil, it's that he disguises himself. And we're going to read a story in just a minute about Adam and Eve, but when the devil came to Adam and Eve, he didn't come as the devil. He never does. He came as a serpent. And serpents are dangerous because they're so stealthy. They, they don't present themselves. And so he came not presenting himself, but just bringing this argument in Eve's mind about sin and God and the, the Word of God and all those kinds of things, ultimately causing them to fall. But, but let me tell you the devil's perfect disguise. This is what makes him so dangerous. The perfect, his perfect disguise is us. See, many times when the devil is introducing thoughts into our minds, we don't know it's the devil until you learn to uncover the devil's lies and his deceptions. And you know about spiritual warfare, which means taking our thoughts captive that I'll talk about. And so you're his perfect disguise. And I'm, I'm going to say something to you, and I want you to listen, because in this message, I want you to think about what, what I'm saying right now. Many of the things that have hurt your life the most that are in your mind were actually introduced by the devil, not you. You did not tell yourself those things. God certainly, in, in his second favorite disguise, is God. See, he loves just to introduce thoughts into our mind and for us to believe that they came from us, because that way we're not going to resist them, because they're our thoughts, not his thoughts. But his second favorite disguise is God. And this is what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. And what Paul is saying here is, I'm afraid because exactly the same way by stealth that the devil came and corrupted Eve, he said, I'm afraid for you, that he's going to steal you away from God. And then he goes on, 2 Corinthians 11, 13. Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And see, when the devil is coming to lie to you, sometimes he wants you to believe it's God. Sometimes he wants you to believe that God is speaking to you. Because his only purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. What he can't steal, he kills. And what he can't kill, he'll destroy. And so Satan is going to constantly be coming to us, introducing thoughts into our minds, especially using hurt and trauma. It's his open door to do that. Let me give you two bi biblical examples of this. And the first is Adam and Eve. And this is Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it nor touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Then let's go down to verse 8. It says, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? So the devil, the devil comes to Adam and Eve, especially Eve, it begins with Eve, and he says to them, has God surely said that you can't eat from these trees? And she says, well, the, the day that we eat that of the tree, we'll die. And he says, you won't die. Was that true? Well, they did die. He's a liar. He always lies. And so he accused God. Let, let me say this. The devil's really good because he convinced two perfect people in a perfect paradise that the person who put them there was evil you got to be good when you can do that. Let me just say this about God. 
Our God is a fabulous God. He didn't create us in hell. He didn't create us in a ghetto. He didn't create us in a wilderness. He created us in a paradise because he's a good God. And the Bible begins in a paradise and it ends in a paradise because our God is a good God. But the devil, the devil's always out to accuse God and he'll use any circumstance, but he's so good. They had no trauma in their past. They didn't have a bad daddy or a bad mama. They didn't grow up in poverty. They had never had a bad day in their life. But here comes the devil accusing God to them and convinces them there's something wrong with God. So they eat the fruit. And the instant they eat the fruit, see, they begin to hide from God. And God walks up and he says, why, why are you hiding from me? And he says, I was afraid because I was naked. Wait just a minute. Who, who made him naked? God made him naked. Without shame. Genesis 2, 25 says, and they were both naked without shame. They had no fear whatsoever of their nakedness, but, he, but God says this to Adam. That's a question. And by the way, God never asked a question to get the answer. He asked a question to give the answer. Who told you that you were naked? He's trying to get Adam to think. How did, how did this thought get into my head? God made us naked. We weren't ashamed of our nakedness 10 minutes ago. How did this thought get into my head? Well, let me give you the answer. The devil came and tempted them and deceived them. They ate the fruit. And when they ate the fruit, they made a mistake. They sinned. And the instant they opened the door through their sin and failure, that opened the door for him to speak this into their spirits. You're defective. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Your bodies are detestable. Was that, was that true? They were glorious. <laughs> they lived for over 900 years. These people had bodies. These people were beautiful. These people were glorious. They, had the, they were made in the image of God. It was the exact opposite of the truth. There's, there's something wrong with you. So all of a sudden, his perfect, the devil's perfect desire comes true. They divide from each other and God. See, that's all, all the devil ultimately wants to do is just keep you from God and healthy relationships because that's what he hates the most. He hates, he hates family. He hates marriage because it looks like God. He hates God. He wants to keep you away from God. So ultimately, all he's trying to do is to keep you separated from God in any healthy relationship by introducing lies into your mind. Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were worthless? Who told you that you couldn't succeed? Who told you that you were nobody? Who told you that God couldn't use you? Who told you that God didn't love you? Who told you that? Because every single one of us at some point in our lives in pain, in trauma, in failure, there's that thought, there's that thought. Adam didn't understand who gave him that thought. But he was afraid. He was hiding from his healer. He was hiding from his maker. And he was divided from his wife. That's the mark of the devil. The devil's evil. He never keeps a promise. And he never will. It's amazing to me that a God who is so faithful could be so mistrusted. And a devil who has never kept a promise could be so followed. That's an amazing thing to me. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series, The Hurt Pocket. Looking for your next great book? Start reading instantly with Marriage Today's eBooks, now available online. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.